All right, so um, my talk is on Linux group policy. Uh, I've been working on group policy on, in the Samba project for uh, six-ish years now. Um, during the talk today, hi. During the talk, uh, we're gonna talk about um, group policy and what it is, why it's important, why you should care. Uh, I'm gonna talk about recent updates and the new features in, in Samba's group policy. Um, we'll go over um, how you can use it to manage and secure your networks. And I'll provide some examples and scenarios. And, um, and then um, we'll discuss how Samba's group policy can be integrated with both Windows, or WinBind and SSSD. We'll go over step-by-step uh, uh, -step instructions on how to set up and configure uh, the gr group policy and talk about some best practices and so on. And, highlight, and then I'll highlight some new documentation that makes it easier to uh, get started with group policy. And then we'll ha hopefully have a discussion at the end. <clears throat> so first, an introduction. So um, group policy provides centralized management. That's the whole point. Um, it allows you to um, and it allows administrators to um, create and manage and deploy policies for many devices from a single location, devices and users. Um, it, it reduces the, re the risk of misconfiguration and it eliminates inconsistencies that might occur um, when, you're, when policies are managed on individual machines. Um, additionally, the centralized management uh, using group policy can save time and reduce the, the workload for administrators. So um, the difference between group policy and a group policy object, group policy is like a work order, uh, is like a template for a work order. And a, a, an object, a group policy object, is, a, is like a filled out copy of that work order. So group policy is kind of a framework for managing everything. And uh, a group o a policy object will apply to specific hosts and specific users. <clears throat> a group policy uh, includes a bunch of tools for managing and the infrastructure for distributing policies. So group policy on Linux has been, uh, has been in Samba since version 4.14. Uh, is built to be similar to popular proprietary tools. There are a number of proprietary um, tools on the market, such as Ventilla and Centrify, that provide the same things. These have been around for 20-ish years, and um, and the purpose of this uh, of this project is to migrate users away from proprietary software on their systems. That's the point. Um, this, uh, providing this group policy allows for easier integration in a Windows environment. Where there are currently many policies that are already available, and we also support custom policies, and the documentation explains how this can be done. The current policies that are available as of Samba 4.18, mostly, uh, we provide scripts for executing on, at, at various intervals, Kerberos and password policies only for Samba's ADDC, which is not supported, so that's a, a bit in, irrelevant here. Um, uh, startup scripts, uh, pseudoers policies, certificate auto-enrollment is a big feature that customers have asked for, uh, browser policies for Chrome, Chromium, and Firefox, uh, firewall D policies, GNOME settings, including dconf uh, custom settings, uh, message of the day and issue policies, smb.conf, uh, PAM access policies, uh, file distribution, uh, open SSH, symlinks, and then drive maps is coming in the next version of Samba, uh, not released yet. Drive maps are um, uh, mount, uh, mount SMB shares uh, in a similar way to how uh, uh, Windows users expect them to be provided on their systems. 
So one big question is, is group policy a mobile device management? And no, it is not. It, uh, it's far short of that. Mobile device management um, is an, a newer technology, provides uh, much more, and is, is intended, and Microsoft actually has a product called Intune, which intends to replace or kind of complement group policy. This is the, the, new, the new thing. Some of the differences between the two, um, when you're deploying and managing, a group policy is Active Directory specific versus MDM being provided via the cloud. Device ownership, um, in, uh, with um, mobile device management, you, you, can, you, uh, you can enroll your personal devices and apply policies, whereas Active Directory, your device is gonna be organization owned most likely. Device management capabilities, uh, MDM provides additional management uh, for uh, monitoring, reporting, et cetera. Um, MDM has additional security features. Uh, cloud integration is also, uh, you can provide seamless integration with cloud services with MDM. Now, um, the next big thing is gonna be providing MDM, and when we're looking into, uh, into this, and there's active projects um, working on uh, enabling authentication um, through Azure, and then um, uh, it, it's in the works, we're looking into how to provide policy management via uh, Microsoft's Intune to Linux clients. So let's talk about some of the latest developments. Um, one of the big fixes this, uh, this past year was in pre prevention of tattooing. Uh, tattooing policies is when you apply a policy to a managed system and then um, when the policy changes, you don't remove the applied policy and that's, uh, that's a big no-no in the industry. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. Um, so I uh, improved the, uh, the, the back-end code for managing policies and preventing tattooing when, uh, when, for example, a policy is removed when you have three that apply. Um, there were a lot of bug fixes, and then um, one of the back ends in the, uh, uh, was very buggy and old, and it's been replaced. So uh, generally, it's been, uh, we've in, I've improved the reliability and the documentation of the most important improvements. And then I mentioned earlier drive maps. The idea is that you, um, to provide a similar experience to win as to what Windows experience users would expect. Um, the drive maps uses the same policy that Microsoft uses, and um, we use, we're using GIO mount to mount the SM, SMB shares. Um, it doesn't mount to a letter, of course, and so that might it'd be a little bit different from a Windows user because they're expected to, uh, expect it to mount with a certain, um, a certain share name, uh, but we can't provide that. Um, it will show up in Nautilus and, uh, and um, Seahorse, similar to the way Windows user would expect. And then the mounts are, are made to be persistent so that they, if you reboot, then it, it, it remains. It will uh, remount the share on reboot. Now I wanted to talk about some use cases. Um, one of the key, uh, key benefits Aside from, you know, there's the, the, the pretty user interface sort of stuff, but um, one of the important things is being able to provide, um, oops, one of, is, is be able to provide, um, as is secure your endpoints. And uh, we can achieve that through a couple of different policies, and I'm gonna show a demo. Uh, it's pre-recorded. Oh, do you need me to hook up to sound for you to get the, the audio, or do you think it'll be all right? I don't know if it, it'll feed through the HDMI. I didn't think to check that. Okay. Let me double check the. Can I do? Can, can I do what? <laughs> Comment on it. Yeah. Well, I, I could do that. It says it's going through HDMI. The output is. So, oh, okay. All right, well, I'll comment on it. Or we could paste in the video later. Oh, let's see. 
Yeah, there's no audio. <laughs> yeah, I'll just have to comment on it. <laughs> Okay, so I've got two shells open. One, it's on the same machine. One is root. Is it? Is it working? Yeah. One is root and one is a user shell. Um, yeah, it's working. <laughs> oh, first I'm going to disable the, uh, the sudo rule, which allows all users to sudo without a password. We don't want that. So I'm just disabling that for the presentation. So that's turned off. There you go. So I'm showing the pseudo, pseudo policy first. And I've got a lot of talking here, okay. <laughs> uh, so first I'm, I'm listing the, the current group policies that apply to this machine. And currently it's only a default domain policy. So we're gonna use the default domain policy to, um, to set policies um, for this system. We're going to be working on, on computer policy. I'm not going to show user policy. So that's the command, GPO manage sudoers. And I'm adding a, a sudo rule, which is going to push, to push to the sysvol, which allows Zipper to run and install updates. And so that will allow all users to run Zipper update, uh, but will not be able to sudo for anything else. Um, and that's pushed to the, the Active Directory sysvol. That command did not put it on the local machine yet. This is called the RSOP command. It shows what policies will apply to the system but have not applied yet. And it shows that it's going to create, it's, it just pulled that from the sysvol and it sees that it's going to create that rule on the system. And now we want to apply the policy with the force apply. The, this command runs automatically in the background, and I'm only forcing it uh, for testing purposes so that we can see it in, in action. So it just forced an apply, and now let's look this crazy command and dump the, uh, the output of, uh, of the cache. That's a cache that stores, that's actually how we keep track of the policies that are applied so that we don't tattoo these settings when we unapply the policy. So you can see there, in sudoers.d, it created that entry. And every computer that is joined and, and, is up, and the default domain policy applies to it will now have this policy. And canceling that. But you can see that it has the right to do it. You look down here, just sudo echo just to try it out. And it's forbidden because you're only allowed to run the update command. <clears throat> And I don't remember what I was saying at this part of the video. <laughs> it's not done. There's a lot more. <laughs> I'll probably remember later, yeah. Okay, oh, oh, and now I'm adding, oh yeah, that's right. Now I'm going to add a rule to allow this, the domain administrator to have passwordless um, pseudo rights on all machines that are joined to the domain. And that's what that rule says. And now I'm listing the output, and you see there's two commands here. Um, the, we, our update command, I've switched back to the root terminal, and if we look at the RSOP, this is the contents on this, the domain sysvol, and you see that it has those two rules, which now apply to all machines joined um, to this domain, because it's on the default domain policy. And you can see I, I, I flubbed here and forgot to apply the policy. <laughs> And now I'm going to go back and force it. Now it's applied. And you can see that there's a second pseudoers rule uh, in the cache. And there it is. And now if you try it, I'm going to sue as the administrator. And you'll see that, uh, that the administrator has pseudo rights to do whatever it wants, if you type pseudo correctly. <laughs> <laughs> And see, that worked. And so you can see that, that this is useful distributing this policy because now the domain administrator ha can do any sort of administration on any computer in the domain. But local users cannot. They can only update the system. And of course, you could deploy any rules that you see fit for your organization. OK, now we're going to uh, deny 
um, uh, PAM authenticate, or not, sorry, uh, open SSH um, for root. We'll do PAM in a minute. So that rule uh, sets a policy in open SSH that says do not permit root logon over SSH. And that's again is being applied to the sysvol, and this command here just lists the contents of the sysvol. On the local host, we're gonna go and, uh, and force the policy. I guess I, I didn't show the RSOP for that, but okay, so it's the policy is applied, and if you dump out the SSHD SSHD config file that it creates, you can see that it applied that policy to the machine. I'm sure I'm saying something very interesting at this point. If you add another rule that permits it, then it will lay down a second file next to it um, and that rule would probably be the, would be, would override the first one. So the reason I'm asking is that it looks like the, in, in the uh, OpenSSHD directory, the file names are somewhat random. So wouldn't it depend on what the random file name would end up being? They're not random, they're actually in order. I believe they were in order. Yeah, I'm intentionally ordering them for that very reason. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, not timestamps, it's, um, I don't remember how exactly I ordered them, but. So it will only override by the time they were created. Like, the last one would be this. I'll look at it in a second. Okay, so it was, no, that one's a random file. Um, that might be a bug. I'll check that. <laughs> That's a good point. Okay, it just created host access policies. I can't re rewind it or it'll get messed up. So, so we added host access policies, um, which applied. Um, what you don't see here is that there was a bug that I've, I have fixed a few months ago that um, applies a um, explicit deny after these allow entries are added, by the way. Um, that one's not, uh, that one's in, in 4.8, 4.19, I think, of Samba. Uh, I have one more question. When, when you force the update of the rules, does it know and does it do actually reload the daemons so that they look at their config files again? No. Well, uh, some of them do. So, like, smb.conf will force a reload. Um, uh, and we can talk more about that in a minute. Um, so, uh, we saw our, our access policies. Kind of missed that, but... Uh, this is this one now. It's adding a um, a um, firewall D rule, and it's using the GPO load command. It uses a different command because it's a registry-based policy. Um, I can, I've, I've added some shortcuts for other commands, but not this one yet. And there's the the that. Firewall D rule, which has some spacing issues in the, <laughs> in the RSOP output. <coughs> so that will that tells it to reject traffic for SSH. That was just as, uh, to test it, and then force the policy. And you can see the rule there was cre was was inserted into our cache. So we need to check to make sure it's actually applied to firewall. And, and this is a bug in the firewall command, I have to point out. If you create a ritual, firewall, the firewall command cannot see, or does not list the rich, list, the rich rules. It's got a bug. But then if you go and you try to add it, then it warns you and says, it's already there. <laughs> so it is applied, but the, the firewall command has an issue. It's a feature. <laughs> You're not allowed to see the firewall rules. Yes. <laughs> so probably, probably. Okay, I think that was the end of it. So, did we have any specific questions? I think I, I didn't really address them. Some of the questions in detail. What's that? 
Oh, right, the reload question. So um, individual policies handle that uh, differently. So for example, when, uh, when writing smb.conf policies, um, a, you can send a, a signal to smbd to, to reload, um, and, and it does that, I believe. Um, uh, some of the other ones. Open SSH, I don't think it's, it's doing a reload, no. So I may need to address that. So enter a bug. <laughs> um, Samuel. I, I'm sorry. Oh, your question was. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so the question was, um, does uh, does Samba tool allow you to create group policy objects and link them to the domain or to the computer? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it could create and link. Yes, it does do that. And I just lost. Let's see if it. I just lost the projector. There we go. It came back. Yes, it does. And then Jeff's question about the ordering. You were right. I think that's a bug. The ordering of the, um, of the policy I think needs to be fixed. Um, some of the policies I've already done that where I've, I have them, like the, the PAM policy explicitly needs to be ordered. Because if it's not ordered properly, then the, the, the access rules will, will fail. And that's also why it adds an, an, uh, an implicit deny. Because if you add allow rules, then it doesn't make any sense if you just fall off the end and then don't, don't deny um, all else afterward. Um, so yeah, I'll need to write that down. <clears throat> All right, so, so integration, um, it works with WinBind, of course. Um, when you're enabling group policy for WinBind, you just set this smb.conf option. Um, it applies machine policies on a specific refresh interval, which is defined in Microsoft documentation. Um, user policy, on the other hand, only applies at log on time. It's a bug, I'm working on it. SSSD. Um, it can also apply um, Samba's group policy. Uh, you just have to install the Samba GP update command, join using SSSD to an Active Directory domain. It obviously doesn't work with like free IPA or anything because they don't have group policy. Um, but then you also need a package called odd.job GP update. Um, uh, this executes the, both machine and user policy on a specific refresh interval for logged on users and for, um, for the system policies. And it applies the policies, in both cases, it applies them on a random interval between 90 and 120 minutes. And the reason for that is so that uh, if you have, for if, if, if it's at a, a set interval and you join multiple machines at the same time or you have a power outage and they all come up, we don't want every machine in the domain hitting the the domain controller all at once to download policies. And then there is an odd job GP update in Alt Linux, which is not the correct package. It's what I cloned this or took this one from. It does something different. So some back best practices. Uh, we prefer you use Samba tool for managing the group policies. Whoops. Oh gosh. I keep tapping the mouse there. Um, and always use the latest version of Samba tool um, because it has the latest fixes. Um, modifying group policies. Samba tool can modify uh, all of the policies in different ways. If they are um, Registry policies, you can use the Samba tool GPO load command on that on the the left side over there, or I guess your right side, and then the GPO manage command has um, specific um, pol uh, management commands for the others. Uh, the reason for this is that um, is that group policy is kind of a mess. <laughs> this is not entirely my fault. A little bit is, but <laughs> mostly this is. Um, 
uh, design choices, choices on Microsoft's side. Group policy is stored in INI files, um, in XML files, in registry files, and occasionally in LDAP. And so it's kind of a mess setting the policy, and it's a it's a mess reading the policy, and so yeah, it's just messy. And so the the commands can be a little bit confusing to get it all set up. You can also apply Windows policy using this command, ironically. But and then for troubleshooting. Um, some of the obvious ones. Uh, I mentioned the RSOP command. That stands for resultant set of policy. That's, that's something that Microsoft desi defines, by the way. And it, it, it basically the idea is you, you, you list the policies that will apply to the machine. Um, and that's, that can be a little bit confusing. Um, some people assume it means the policies that are applied. It's, it's just the, the policies that will or have applied. Um, it's, it's, uh, um, a accumulation of all policies that should apply to the machine, I should say. Um, the, uh, you can force the command with debug if you, if you encounter problems, and the, uh, deep, there's plenty of debug that can help you diagnose issues. Um, and then finally, you saw me dumping the cache um, and, and grepping for different keys and such. Uh, William pointed out in his talk uh, and mentioned to me later that this is awful and I need to <laughs> simplify this. <laughs> it, he said it could be improved, that's true. Um, so I, I'll be adding, adding some tools for debugging this. Um, and then there's documentation for each of the uh, client-side extensions. That's a, uh, that's a term for the, 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 the module that wraps and applies the policy to the machine. And then on the on new documentation, so I, I wrote like a little ebook. Um, it's basically just a brain but dump. It's nothing um, no, nothing super well polished, but um, but I was getting a lot of questions on the ma mailing lists and such. And so this is to try to eliminate some of those those questions. And so now there is an online resource, um, and uh, and I'm uh, adding changes to it as I as I update it. It's linked to in the Samba wiki as well, so you can uh, read and it explains how each policy works and how to apply them, how to debug them, specifics on each policy. Yeah, and I just said it. Uh, it gives the uh, basic management instructions, a general overview. T it teaches you how to create a policy, how to troubleshoot, how to deploy. All right. And, and that's it for me. Are there more questions? Um, you in the back with the TSA issues. We had this discussion beforehand. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, please use the microphone when you're asking questions. It, it, it's so the online folks can hear the questions as well. Uh, so when it comes to uh, partic particularly this documentation and the um, uh, ebook, is there anywhere where you are documenting like some example use cases? Because I'm looking at it from the QA, uh, uh, QA point of view. So we have test cases for group policy objects with Active Directory, but they are not necessarily, um, we're not necessarily looking that deep uh, with Samba. And we have triple SD integration with Samba, with um, Active Directory, but we are kind of missing some good scenarios uh, that are actually useful for us to, for, for you that we test them. Okay, yeah, the, the book has um, some really basic uh, uh, documentation on, on, on simple policies that you could test with. Um, each one walks through, each chapter walks through how, uh, how to apply a policy and it, and, and the way I did it was I, I, I set up a policy, I applied it, and I tested it, made sure it worked, and then, and then just wrote, through, wrote down everything that happened, you know, everything that it's supposed to do, what you're expected to see. So that, that could be helpful in writing um, some tests. If you have more specific things you want to test, then, then ask me and I can help. Yeah, please reach out. Um, Go ahead. Regarding uh, how policies are updated, if if uh, you apply a policy and, uh, for example, the permit, permit root login to no, and then someone, you didn't apply the, the, the policy yet, it hasn't been applied automatically. If someone tries to log in as root via SSH, will it 
check if the policy applies to that case and then applies it on immediately? Or you need to, if you want the, the policy to be applied, you need to force it? No, that's what you're describing is actually how MDM works. It applies a policy when it's needed. But in group policy, it applies it on an interval. And if it hasn't applied yet, then you can still SSH. Yeah. That, that's one downside of group policy is that it applies on this interval. And you don't know exactly when um, each machine is going to get that policy. But you do know that each machine should have that, that policy applied within, you know, within 120 minutes at the most. Um, you mentioned that you can manage uh, startup scripts. Are these system D jobs or what kind of startup scripts are these? Oh, it, it's actually, they're just cron scripts. They're cron jobs that are, uh, that are installed and are set to run at reboot. Okay, thanks. Yeah. We out of time? Okay, thanks everybody. <laughs>